Dear students, let's start with next two chapters of So Many Hungers by Bhavani Bhattacharya. Then the next chapter, that is chapter 13, we see, we see Kajoli and her family. They have also set out on their journey on high road. Journey on high road means the journey on the highway, that is on the road to the city. And that is they are on their own way to Calcutta. There are millions of other destitutes in the hope of sport and nourishment from the city people. These people now have earned for themselves the name destitute, which does not only have the, uh, the pity factor, but it also has a kind of uh, a derogatory impact. They were all going to leave their standing autumn crops mortgaged at a bare fraction of the market price. And who was taking them? The traders. The traders were taking those standing crops so that these farmers could pay the land rents. They have exodus to the city in search of food, but they left their lands there. As in the case of Kajoli's mother, she could not sell the land itself. The land was in the names of their husbands. And so they left the land and went to the city in search of food. Here in the village actually there is no hope of any help as everybody is in the similar condition. And most of the villagers have already left. Kajoli and her family they tried to fend off on their own in the village. And it's only in the extreme conditions that they also decide to leave the village. And while they are on the roadside, they come across many a pathetic scenes. People from different villages were moving on. And they are all in a state of starvation, like Kajoli and her family. Author called them dehydrated sticks of humanity because of their appearance, because of the starved condition, malnourished condition they were. They were all uh, there, starved, weary, walking, day by day dying because of a long hunger that has been there with them. On this roadside, many vultures were seen eating corpses or the corpses were lying eaten by vultures by the side of the road. People were losing strength while on their way to the city and they were dying on the way and vultures were perched on the trees lining the road on the lookout of these fallen people, these people who had no strength to walk on. We see another ghastly spectacle. Kajali and Onu while walking tried to look for food in form of roots or fruit by the road as they could see that mother was fast losing her strength one uh, reason why mother did not take the train which was there because she could see a long and a big crowd thronging to board the train and she is afraid what if pregnant casually loses her foot you know and uh, uh, slips while boarding the train what if ono was lost so she prefer to walk like many other villagers who are doing the same thing. While on the journey, Kajuli sets out to look for the food, setting her mother at one side, it's, a, it's almost a, uh, evening time. She approaches a jackfruit tree, jackfruit tree and she comes across a weak living woman being attacked by a jackal. Terrified, she runs back to her mother who approaches the dying woman puts a drop of water in her mouth uh, mother comes and the woman has uh, she was almost on the verge of death and she dies the mother has had the satisfaction of putting the last drop of water in her mouth while going close to the wo woman mother notices that near the body a ripe jack true jack fruit is seen which probably was the reason why this woman this jack fruit is picked by the mother for her children 
we see here in this scene a pathetic interplay of life and death and death sometimes you know winning over the other but the glimpse of life in the in that fruit which is lying there which brings a hope to the mother that she'll be able to feed her ch children kajuli we see on the way during their journey she is dazed with hunger and one day while she is on the lookout again for the food she finds herself facing a soldier who is from punjab and begging him for food he the soldier gives her bread to eat which she in her half day state of hunger she eats and she almost gulps hungrily and the moment the food is finished she is overcome by a sense of guilt guilt that she had not even given a thought to her hungry mother and her hunger craved brother and in this taste condition the condition of which is brought about not only by hunger only but by also a sense of guilt the soldier takes her in the foliage he takes advantage of her and with the promise that he will give her more food and while she is being pulled by the soldier the author describes the state of the mind of kajwali he says quote her body was a bit of rag to cover her soul and the rag was of no account a mere encumbrance and she had fled her body fled to her mother and brother who needed bread to eat we see at this point author is able to bring us the state of the mind of kajoli her body what is happening to her body is of no importance it is her soul it is her soul which is going out to give her mother and her brother some food that survival is much more important than any other thing this soldier is shown to act so not because he is basically a cruel or a depraved man but it is because of the normal masculine needs for so many months he is away from his family fighting on the borders in the army and later on we see him then he saw uh, kajoli bleeding he was so very sorry that he tried to help her in every possible way and we see in this soldier a uh, respect for all the all the farmers who were on the on the road destitutes and the reason for this is that the soldier himself had lands back in the state kajoli we see his she has started bleeding and the soldier is terrified he leaves her in haste and he tries to compensate for the guilt by stuffing bread and money in her fist it was the sound of the jackal which makes her feel uh, dread the uh, terror terrified and she there is a spurt of energy in her and she manages to scream onu oh, directed by the soldier and of course by the scream of her sister he saves his sister from jackal we see a shred of humanity in the soldier that makes him request his officer beseech his officer to help the girl and uh, it was obvious that she was having a miscarriage kajoli was taken to the army hospital in calcutta as a result her mother and her brother also accompany her and her mother we see she is overwhelmed with the kindness of the officer and blesses him many a times she is taken to the hospital but mother and onu they are not allowed to stay near the hospital and they are left in the city and not taken to the cantonment area kajoli's mother is filled with the hope in her all in a sense that probably devata's grandson would help them and they would get food and shelter onu would go to the school and everything will be fine the chapter manages to bring out the innocence of the villagers we see in chapter 14 a short glimpse of rahul rahul we see he is no longer seen in his laboratory but he is by then you know totally involved in a challenging task of helping the destitutes who were 
thronging to the city in great numbers. The spectacle of the starving multitude of people, it's seen everywhere and it's a painful experience. He had set up a kitchen where he could get rice and vegetable cooked and he would try to feed all those people who came to the city, the old, the young, the famished destitutes. At station, when Rahul was waiting impatiently for the goods wagon with rice, this rice was gifted by the people of Bombay and he's waiting for this rice to arrive because his own stock was just about finished. He is worried about how he will feed the destitutes next day. He came across an artist sketching a dead mother whose child was already suckling, was, you know, he was still suckling on her dead frame. This artist is so absorbed in his work that he did not even notice that the mother had died. When people noted this dead women, they, they took him to task. They called him a brute and manhandled him. They threw his sketches and uh, his pens, pens everywhere, they even tear his um, clothes. Rahul, he picks up his, uh, his drawing sketch pad and his uh, pen. And he could very well understand that the artist, you know, he had a soft corner for the artist. But when the artist, he uh, shows an aversion, dislike, a disgust, when he has finally realized that the woman he is sketching is a dead woman and he leaves that spot. That Rahul felt was the poor woman's second death. Mother, we are, see, in the city she is all out for a rude shock. Kajali's mother thought that she will get food for Ono and herself in the city. But she is shocked to see that a huge number of destitutes like them were living in dismal conditions out in the open by the pavement. And when she got up in the morning, she saw a man eating out of the rubbish, taking a banana skin and gulping on it. And when he was asked about the food, he offered another banana skin from the rubbish to them. She was duly informed by that man that there was food at some food houses, but it was too meagre because too many people were there who were in lookout for that food. And that too, it was served once in a day, later in the day. It was not enough for them. And therefore, it was suggested to them that they should go out on the lookout from any kind of food from the rubbish cans. Onu ate the banana skin after washing it, but mother could not think of it because this was uh, a kind of polluted food. Garbage cans as food bowls. You know, they are garbage cans are considered to be food bowls for these destitutes. And this indicates the dismal conditions of the destitute living on the side lanes. Mother and Onu were able to get some rice gruelets food in one of the food houses but this food is too small and then they therefore they are advised to get up early and go searching the rubbish bins to nourish them. Mother now realizing the dismal conditions she is glad that Kajali is away in hospital from these shattering realities and when she visits Kajali she assures her falsely that they are doing well they are getting ample food and they have even got new clothes. Both these chapters they point out toward, uh, towards the heart-rending conditions of the villagers in the city. They are not getting any sympathy. They are not getting any facilities there as well. Of course, there are many philanthropists who are out to uh, nourish them. But even they are helpless because the shortage of food is there. Then the real picture of their being forced to abandon their homes in search of food in a city of rich people. It is a tragic irony. They don't realize what they have thought is just a, a, a falsehood they are feeding to themselves. The self-respecting villagers we see are reduced to the levels of beggars. Another irony is that Rahul 
is waiting for the philanthropy of the other states to send rice to nourish the famishing multitude. When these very people who are the growers of the same rice, they are lying in miserable conditions in the rat infested dirty alleys of the city. The short but faith sustaining incidents of generosity of the officer and remorseful soldiers are there which bring back uh, you know the faith in the humanity we also come across in this uh, these chapters the tragic miscarriage of kajo that's all that's almost all that is there in these couple of chapters we'll be continuing thank you so much